This is the case of odontogenic keratocyst, also called keratocystic odontogenic tumor. The clinician usually tells you that uh, this is a cyst in the mandible somewhere around the wisdom tooth area, which is the most common localization for this type of odontogenic cyst. The wall of the cyst consists of fibrous tissue. We have hemorrhage here and there. And uh, typically, the chronic inflammation is typically not very prominent. We, we can find just a small foci here and there. But the most important morphological sign for diagnosis of this uh, type of cyst is the appearance of the epithelium. So take a look at it. It is quite thin and regular. And if you look at the basal layer, it is straight and regular without reedy ridges, without these finger-like projections. That's one important sign. And because we do not have these fingers that hold uh, epithelium to the fibrous tissue beneath it, we can sometimes find these artificial clefts or empty spaces. This is an artifact, but it is quite a useful, useful sign. Another important feature is when we look at the basal layer, we can see that the basal cells, basal keratinocytes, are uh, pal palisading. They are arranged in the palisade. So it resembles the picket fence. So elongated nuclei are arranged one uh, next to the other. And uh, uh, the nuclei are also slightly hyperchromatic. The squamous epithelium is quite thin. According to the literature, it should have uh, from six to eight cells, which is quite about right in this case. Uh, so that's another important feature. And the next important morphological sign, important for differential diagnosis, is the presence of parakeratosis. Um, parakeratosis means that we have uh, the pycnotic nuclei retained in the superficial layer of keratinocytes. But the appearance of this parakeratosis is quite specific. It's, it's right that we can find some uh, pycnotic nuclei here and there but uh, the overall appearance is different than in typical parakeratosis in the epidermis. I think quite useful, uh, useful sign is when we look at it on lower magnification and it looks like um, someone took a purple marker and lined uh, and draw the line um, on the surface of the epithelium and the line is slightly wavy or corrugated. That's another important feature. So let's take a look at some different area if we can find all of those uh, defining features. Let's say here. Again, we see a thin epithelium, six to eight uh, layers or six to eight cells thick. We see parakeratosis, or, which has hyper eosinophilic appearance. Uh, the basal layer uh, is palisading, it is smooth uh, without reedy ridges. Uh, the surface is slightly wavy or corrugated. And here we even see the artificial cleft because we do not have these reedy ridges or finger-like protections. So we are quite happy if we can find all of these signs in the biopsy. Uh, when this type of cyst is secondarily inflamed, uh, the histology could be different and it could be quite hard to diagnose this type of, uh, this type of cyst. The important differential diagnosis is radicular cyst, which has prominent finger-like projections or reti ridges and quite prominent inflammation. Also follicular cyst or dentigerous cyst uh, is in the differential diagnosis. It shouldn't have uh, the parakeratosis and undulating surface. So why is it important to diagnose this type of cysts? Why we just can't write um, benign odontogenic cysts? Well, we can, but it is not the most accurate diagnosis. Uh, the reason for that is uh, uh, the more aggressive behavior of this type of the odontogenic cyst, and it is associated with higher recurrence rate, so the clinician should know about it. Another important fact is uh, 
that multiple um, autoantigenic keratocysts are commonly associated with Gorlin syndrome, also called nevoid basal cell carcinoma syndrome. People with uh, this syndrome have uh, multiple autoantigenic keratocysts and uh, multiple basal cell carcinomas in quite young age. It is autosomal dominant hereditary condition, but it is also commonly caused by spontaneous mutations. In case of Gorlin syndrome, you can find more of these cysts, or you can also see some satellite cysts, a smaller, smaller cyst next to the major one. So be careful about that, and it's, it's quite a good idea to inform the clinician to check for the basal cell carcinomas, and um, clinicians should exclude the Gorlin syndrome where, uh, when these types of cysts are multiple. All right, so odontogenic keratocyst or keratocystic odontogenic tumor. Thanks for watching.